I've invented a new stat. It's not a particularly nice stat, and to be honest, it's not even that meaningful a stat. But it is a fun stat. See, pitchers in baseball are always chasing different ways of achieving perfection. Shutouts, no-hitters, perfect games. But those are really hard, and just for starters. There are simpler, more universal challenges. You can throw a three-pitch inning, strike out all three batters, you can throw an immaculate inning in which you strike out the side on nine consecutive strikes. It's like a game within a game. Relief pitchers in baseball rely on the strikeout pretty heavily, both to energize crowds and appease management. It's an easy number to point to in contract negotiations. So yeah, striking out the side is usually a fun way to boost your stats and excite fans and... Wait, what's that sound? Oh, uh, th they're booing? Huh. Well, look, don't sweat it, man. You had a great in it. Except for that one pitch, that is. He struck him out, and the ball game is over. Striking out the side is a moot point. If snuck between those strikeouts, there's a home run. Nobody knows that better than Edwin Diaz. As a Mets fan watching Edwin, it was hard not to be impressed with his stuff early on. It moved and bit hard. His K-9 ratio in 2019 was the best it had been his entire career at 15.4. But Edwin's Achilles heel was the long ball, which he gave up a career high 15 times in 2019. Those two ideas seemed so at odds with each other. He's had such mastery over hitters, except for these intermittent moments of craphood. Kurt Suzuki! Seven runs in the bottom of the ninth! I decided to keep track of outings for relievers that lasted one inning and featured three strikeouts and at least one home run. It seemed like those kinds of outings happened all the time with Diaz watching as a fan, but I had no frame of reference for what the rest of the league was like or if I was just making that scenario up. Well, sure enough, I was right. Diaz had four such outings, a mark that led the league in 2019. Josh Hader had three such outings. Then there was a mix of guys with two or one. But okay, maybe it was just a fluke. Let's pull the lens back to include 2018 when Diaz was an all-star with the Seattle Mariners. Yep. There's Eddie at the top with five. That's why I've decided to call this kind of outing an Edwinning. An Edwin Diaz type inning. And they're hard to come by. Pull the lens back even further to look at every Edwinning from 2015 to 2019, and there's our buddy Edwin right there at the top with six such outings. He didn't have any in his rookie season in 2016. That means Edwin Diaz gave the MLB a two-year head start in this category and proceeded to blow them all away. Only one other pitcher has posted as many as five Ed winnings, and that's Tyler Clippard. Some other familiar names start to pop up, like Andrew Miller, who posted four Ed winnings in the span of six weeks in 2016. We'll get back to that. When you look at the entire decade, 2010 to 2019, Edwin still comes in tied for third in Ed winnings, despite only playing in four of the ten seasons. His six are tied with Joaquim Soria. Clippard and Kenley Jansen are the only relievers to have notched seven Ed winnings in the decade. Clippard, Jansen, and Soria never did it more than twice in a season. In the history of baseball, there are only three instances of a player having three or more Ed winnings in a single season. Josh Hader's three in 2019, Andrew Miller's four in 2016, and Edwin Diaz's four in 2019. The funny thing is, Ed winnings don't always mean that the game ended poorly. Edwin Diaz's team, for what it's worth, has won all six games in which he threw an Ed winning, and only one resulted in a blown save. Kenley Jansen won six of the seven games in which he threw one, but he did blow two saves that the Dodgers had to win via walk-off. Soria and Clippard both lost three Edwinning games, mostly because they weren't typically closers. Again, we'll get back to that. There are a few Edwinnings in particular that I want to focus on as being the worst. The first is Wandy Rodriguez. Wandy, while pitching for the Rangers in 2015, came into a close game with runners on second and third. He allows a couple of hits, including three runs of his own, but strikes out the side. Wandy gets sent out for a second inning and promptly loads the bases, Chris Young belts a grand slam, and even that isn't enough to get Wandy out. It's only after another walk that Rodriguez gets pulled from the game. Three outs recorded, three Ks, one grand slam. I'll call this a technical Ed winning, with a true Ed winning being contained within the confines of one half inning. 
Juan Carlos Oviedo, aka Leo Nunez, allowed six runs in an Ed winning in 2005 after entering one batter into an inning, that batter before him having Homer. I'm thinking this should also count as a technical Ed winning since he didn't start it and especially since damage was already done in the frame. The most runs in a true Ed winning is Ariel Hernandez. One inning for the Reds on July 20th, 2017, six runs allowed, two dingers given up. That is the worst true Ed winning. Finally, there's Andre Rienzo. It's August 3rd, 2014, and a bad White Sox team is getting killed by a worse Twins team. Rienzo gets put in down 13-3 in the ninth. He fans the first batter, then proceeds to give up back-to-back-to-back jacks to the 6, 7, and 8 hitters in the Minnesota lineup. Oswaldo Arcias still hasn't landed. Look at that moonshot. Eric Fryer hit the third dinger. It was his only one of the season, his second of two in the majors. Andre Rienzo is now a starting pitcher in the Mexican League, owning the honor of most home runs allowed in a single Ed winning, technical or true, ever. It should be said that all six of Edwin Diaz's career Ed winnings have been true Ed winnings, as are all seven of Tyler Clippert's and six of Kenley Jansen's seven. Edwin has even achieved two immaculate Ed winnings. That's an Ed winning with exactly four batters faced, three Ks, one home run allowed. No walks or extra hits, just true efficiency and execution. The only pitchers to throw three immaculate Ed winnings are Tyler Clippard, Andrew Miller, and Craig Kimbrell. There have only been 12 Ed winnings in postseason history. Perhaps the most famous one is Brad Lidge in the 2005 NLCS, who after pushing the Cardinals to the brink of elimination, allowed a three-run ninth-inning go-ahead bomb to Albert Pujols. Armando Benitez did something similar in the 1997 ALCS, giving up a go-ahead three-run homer to Marquise Grissom. Whereas the Astros would go on to win their series despite Lidge's blown save, the O's would lose in six. Because Benitez allowed a home run in the 11th in Game 6. World Series Ed winnings are few and far between. The first came in 1970. Eddie Watt entered an inning inheriting two of Jim Palmer's runners. He promptly gave up a three-run homer to Lee May to lose the lead, then retired three of the next four on strikes. Baltimore lost the game, but won the series. In 2009, Jabba Chamberlain looked to set up a Mariano Rivera save in Game 4, striking out Jason Wirth and Raul Ibanez and getting Pedro Feliz down 1-2. But after working the count full in a great at-bat, Pedro Feliz lined a shot to left to tie the game. The Yanks eventually won the game and the series, though. Josh James had one of the more fascinating Ed winnings of any game in the 2019 World Series. He entered with two outs in the seventh and retired Kurt Suzuki on a ground out. In the eighth, he struck out Victor Robles, but Robles took first on a passed ball. James struck out the next batter, Trey Turner, before Adam Eaton cranked a home. And this one is rocketed out to right. James rebounded by striking out Rendon, but was pulled with two outs. That's three outs recorded, three strikeouts, and a home run. Do we count that? I think I'm drawing the line there since there was an out that wasn't a strikeout. But if we took that one batter before and the seventh out of the equation, that's a doozy of an inning right there. I looked it up and that sort of inning has only happened once in the history of baseball. Regular season or playoffs. Two thirds of an inning pitched, three strikeouts, and a home run allowed. This is what I'll call an evil Ed winning. Somehow even worse than a full Ed winning. So of course, like any catastrophe, we must turn to the 2019 Detroit Tigers. Buck Farmer allowed a leadoff home run to Nelson Cruz in the eighth before striking out the side. But the third batter reached on a wild pitch. Farmer was pulled for Jose Cisnero, who struck out Luis Arias. Four strikeouts in an inning. Funny game, huh, Monty? I'll say this, there's a reason why Ed winnings are fairly uncommon. For one, if you give up a home run as a reliever, there's a chance it's a walk-off and the game is over. Second, with how tight games are managed nowadays, how many relievers get to stay in the game after serving up a dinger, especially closers who have just blown a save? That's why Edwin Diaz and Kenley Jansen usually still come out on top in their Ed winnings. They're protecting a multi-run lead and are allowed to finish the game. To give you an idea of how rare Ed winnings are, since 1904 there have only been 26 days where there were two Ed winnings around the league. It's becoming a bit more common with the feast or famine nature of baseball these days, occurring 17 times since 2010. It hadn't happened pre-1990. 
Only twice has it occurred in the same game. The first time was September 30th, 2017. Houston's Luke Gregerson served up an Ed winning in the seventh, which Ed winning savant Craig Kimbrell promptly returned in the ninth. But Kimbrell had a big lead, and the Sox just locked up the AL East title, so no one cared. The second such instance came on April 19th, 2019. Josh Hader threw a technical Ed winning, getting pulled with two outs in the eighth after serving up a game winning three run jack to Kike Hernandez. Three Ks, one dinger. Joe Kelly followed that up with a true Ed winning in the bottom of the eighth, making it the only consecutive Ed winning performance in the history of baseball. That's why Ed winnings are a rare feat, and are usually reserved for relievers capable of throwing a lot of pitches or innings, working through adversity. Tyler Clippert has never thrown less than 60 innings and isn't a closer. Joaquim Soria is in the same boat. In his two seasons with multiple Ed winnings, he threw 66 and two thirds and 69 innings. He's there to eat frames, and get saves if need be. Josh Hader threw 75 and two-thirds innings in 2019, in which he had a career-best whip and strikeouts per nine innings ratio. Kenley Jansen, when healthy, throws 65 to 75 innings a year as closer for debatably the best team in the NL, year after year. His regular seasons have barely mattered since 2013, and he's still elite. In Andrew Miller's 2016, the one where he had four Ed winnings in six weeks, all of them came as a Yankee, and a month after his last Ed winning, he was dealt to Cleveland. He pitched 74 and a third innings on the season, won 10 games as a reliever, and posted a then career best in ERA, whip, and strikeouts per nine. And when the regular season ended, he messed around and got ALCS MVP as the Indians went to the World Series. Edwin Diaz in 2019, pitched only 58 innings. Four were Ed winnings. And even though he won them all, what should have been confidence-boosting outings protecting a cushioned lead turned into frustrating mental beatdowns that carried over game to game. While Ed winnings are not always of huge consequence, they shattered the very artist that brought them to life. Edwin Diaz has been devoured by his own creation. Suzuki!